Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Chase of Rocky Mountain HVMC and this is our 2022 Neck Brace Buyer's Guide. All right, everyone, thank you so much for checking into the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel. As you can see today, we are showing you all the neck braces that we offer for 2022. We're gonna go through today, and I'm gonna talk about each one, and I'm gonna be pretty brief. I'm just gonna cover a couple of the key reasons and features that make them unique, and our goal is that by the end of this video, you will have one, two, maybe even three that you're interested in, and the best advice that we can give you is find some that you like, go watch the product spotlights where we talk about them in full detail, you can read, write reviews. As always, if you do want some more feedback because I've written in a lot of the braces that are up here, well, leave your questions, your comments below, and we will help get those answered for you. Now, that being said, you notice too that there's kind of two types of braces on the table. You've got your traditional neck braces, which are these four here, and you've got what we call more of a race collar. So we're gonna talk about the differences between these when we cross that bridge. That being said, let's kick it off with brace number one, which is the Liat GPX 5.5. So Liat has been in the game for a long time with neck braces. They kind of pride themselves on being the first company to make a motocross specific neck brace. And here's what I like about the 5.5, this one that I've ridden in. I like the fit, it's very comfortable, but I also like how much adjustability that you have with the 5.5. You actually, with their strut in the back, you have six different locations for that. You can slide it back and forth. And you've got four locations for the chest mount. So neck brace fitment is very important. You wanna make sure it fits correctly to get the most protection possible. And so with this, it has the most adjustability of any of the braces up here. Pretty pricey though, you're gonna be up close to 400 bucks. And the one nitpick that I do have with the 5.5 is that the strut on the back compared to some of these others up here, it's pretty long. And I know nowadays there's a lot of roost deflectors that are very low profile. So that could come into play depending on the roost deflector that you're wearing. But overall, solid neck brace. From there, you have the 3.5. Younger brother to the 5.5, you come down quite a bit in price, and really what you're giving up when you drop down to the 3.5 is just the adjustability. You do have three different adjustability points on the back, but you're not gonna have any in the front, but what I do like about this brace is that it's lighter than the 5.5, so it feels even lighter when you have it on. Now the strut on the back is gonna be about the same size as the 5.5, I already talked about that, but again, you come down in price point and it's lighter. Now here in the middle, you have the Alpine Stars Bionic Tech 2. So this neck brace has been around for a while. One thing I love about this brace is the magnetic open and closure here in the front. Of all the braces to open and close these, this I feel is the easiest. I just like their setup. They do have their size adapter system, so you actually have some extra plates that will be in the box that you allow you to adjust the length of the brace to get the correct fitment. And also with their strut in the rear, it's progressive. So it is designed to break away in the event that you have too much force on it. The only gripe that I have with the Bionic Tech 2 is that when you put this one on, of all the braces up here, it does feel the biggest and the heaviest when you have it. And the strut in the back is the longest of all the braces. Next up, you have the Atlas Air. This is another neck brace that I've ridden in personally. And with this one, what I like, very low profile. It feels very lightweight. And I would say that this compared to the 5.5 or the 3.5, I feel like the Atlas Air is just a little bit more low profile. They do offer different pads that you can put in here to adjust the height of it if you do need to. Now with the Air though, you're not gonna get as much adjustability as say the Liat. You do have six points of adjustment in the back, but none in the front. What I do like about this brace though is that these chest mounts in the front, they purposely made those to have more flex. And they said that it kind of acts like suspension for the neck brace. So those, are your traditional neck braces. Now we're moving into a couple of other options that we like, they're more called a race collar. You've got the Atlas Vision Collar, and then you have the R4 from EVS. And looking at these two, the drastic difference is that compared to all the others we just showed you, you're not gonna have the shelf in the front or the back. These first four that we just showed you are designed to one, limit your range of motion for hyperflexion and hyperextension, and also for compression. One thing I think a lot of riders forget about is that a neck brace 
not only there to help limit range of motion, but also for compression. Most of your major neck injuries are from hitting really hard and compressing the spine, and that can be devastating. So a neck brace is also there for that as well. Now, with these two, we'll start with the Atlas Vision Collar. So Atlas came out with this after they had the Atlas Air, and they designed this for riders who maybe like the idea of a neck brace for the compression factor I just talked about, but don't wanna worry about limiting the range of motion front to back. If that is you, then you definitely wanna go with something like this with the Atlas Vision Collar. Because as you can see, there's no shelf in the front, there's no shelf in the back. All you're gonna do is just have this D3O padding underneath here, which D3O, if you're not familiar with that, it's awesome, it absorbs a ton of energy. So this was built specifically for compression. But if you're a rider again that you want to be able to you know, limit that range of motion front and back, then go with the traditional style neck brace. I will tell you though, from my personal feedback, that riding in a regular neck brace like these, it's gonna feel like it limits a lot of your range of motion when you're just standing there. But as a rider, when I'm riding in the attack position, I don't really feel like it limits my range of motion. But again, that is going to be rider preference. Now with the Atlas Vision, also what I do like about this is that it is ultra low profile. To be honest with you, when you have this on, you almost don't even realize that you're wearing it because you don't have you know, the shelf in the front or the back, so you still get all that range of motion. It does still limit a little bit side to side, but this also, it's pretty much gonna work with just about any roost deflector or chest protector out there because of how small it is. And then last but not least, you have the EVS R4, which has actually been around for a long time. As far as budget goes, this is the least expensive option that you have up here on the table. Now comparing it to the Atlas Vision, it is a little bit lower in price point, but you can see just comparing the two side by side that the Atlas Vision is quite a bit lower and sits even more low profile than the R4. And then with the R4, the R4 does have a strut in the back, but it's not as tall as the others. And I do get more range of motion with the R4 than the other traditional neck braces. I guess you could say that the R4 kind of bridges the gap between those and the Atlas Vision up here. You do get a little bit of adjustability. There's a couple locations for this rear strut in the back. With the Atlas Vision, it's just basically there's two sides available and you don't get any of adjustability with that. But again, if you are interested in a neck brace for more compression protection, check out these two. If you like the idea of a traditional style neck brace where it's gonna limit your range of motion front to back, then one of these four would be the better option for you. And that does it. That is our 2022 neck brace buyer's guide. Like I said, I was short, brief, to the point. Watch those product spotlights, read rider reviews. Again, ask questions below. We'll get those answered for you. And of course, if you have one of these, we would love to know which one you have. What have you liked? What have you disliked about it? You know, tell us a story. Did you crash with a neck brace on? Did you crash with a neck brace off and then get a neck brace later on? We know neck braces are kind of polarizing right now. Some people think they're awesome, that they're a key piece of safety equipment. Other people are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. But my advice to you, if you feel like a neck brace is going to make you safer as a rider, then by all means, wear a neck brace. With that being said, remember, orders over $75 ship free. If you like this product, or excuse me, this buyer's guide, well, get subscribed to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel because we have buyer's guides for all the major categories for off-road. So get subscribed, hit that notification bell. That way you know when all our great videos come out. I am Chase, and we'll see you on the trails.